for miraculous demonstrations, and Greeks go in for philosophical wisdom, we go right on proclaiming Christ, the crucified. Jews treat this like an anti-miracle, and Greeks pass it off as absurd. But to us who are personally called by God himself, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is God's ultimate miracle and wisdom all wrapped up in one. Human wisdom is so tinny, so impotent, next to the seeming absurdity of God. Human strength can't begin to compete with God's weakness. Take a good look, friends, in the latest philosophy. I was unsure of how to go about this and felt totally inadequate. We, of course, have plenty of wisdom to pass on to you once you get your feet on firm spiritual ground. But it's not popular wisdom, the fashionable wisdom of high-priced experts that will be out of date in a year or so. God's wisdom is something mysterious that goes deep into the interior of His purposes. You don't find it lying around on the surface. It's not the latest message, but more like the oldest. What God determined as the way to bring out His best in us, long before we ever arrived on the scene. The experts of our day haven't a clue about what this eternal plan is. If they had, they wouldn't have killed the master of the God-designed life on a cross. That's why we have this scripture text. No one's ever seen or heard anything like this, never so much as imagined anything quite like it, what God has arranged for those who love Him. But you've seen and heard it because God, by His Spirit, has brought it all out into the open before you. Use this freedom as an... My counsel is this. Live freely, animated and motivated by God's Spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. For there is a root of sinful self-interest in us that is at odds with a free spirit, just as the free spirit is incompatible with selfishness. These two ways of life are antithetical, so that you cannot live at times one way and at times another way according to how you feel on any given day. Why don't you choose to be led by the spirit and so escape the erratic compulsions of a law-dominated existence? To the priest who makes atonement. These are the instructions for the peace offering which is presented to God. If you bring it to offer thanksgiving, then along with the thanksgiving offering, present unraised loaves of bread mixed with oil, unraised wafers spread with oil, and cakes of fine flour, well kneaded and mixed with oil. Along with the peace offering of thanksgiving, present loaves of yeast bread as an offering. Bring one of each kind as an offering, a contribution offering to God. It goes to the priest who throws the blood of the peace offering. Eat the meat from the peace offering of thanksgiving the same day it is offered. Don't leave any of it overnight. If the offering is a votive offering or a free will offering, it may be eaten the same day it is sacrificed, and whatever is left over on the next day may also be eaten. But any meat from the sacrifice that is left to the third day must be burned up. If any of the meat from the peace offering is eaten on the third day, the person who has brought it will not be accepted. It won't benefit him a bit. It has become defiled meat, and whoever eats it must take responsibility for his iniquity. Don't eat meat that has touched anything ritually unclean. Burn it up. Any other meat can be eaten by those who are ritually clean. But if you're not ritually clean and eat meat from the peace offering for God, you will be excluded from the congregation. And if you touch anything ritually unclean, whether human or animal uncleanness or an obscene object, and go ahead and eat from a peace offering for God, you'll be excluded from the congregation. God wave off Developing Patience Chapter 5 By entering through faith into what God has always wanted to do for us, set us right with Him, make us fit for Him, we have it all together with God because of our Master Jesus. And that's not all. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that He has already thrown open His door to us. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. Someone loves me? I'm telling you these things while I'm still living with you. The friend, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. He will remind you of all the things I have told you. I'm leaving you well and whole. That's my parting gift to you. Peace. I don't leave you the way you're used to being left, feeling abandoned, bereft. So don't be upset. Don't be distraught. You've heard me tell the farmer. Chapter 3. The Peace Offering If your offering is a peace offering and you present an animal from the herd, either male or female, it must be an animal without any defect. 
Lay your hand on the head of your offering and slaughter it at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Aaron's sons, the priests, will throw the blood on all sides of the altar. As a fire gift to God from the peace offering, present all the fat that covers or is connected to the entrails, the two kidneys and the fat around them at the loins, and the lobe of the liver that is removed along with the kidneys. Aaron and his sons will burn it on the altar along with the whole burnt offering that is on the wood prepared for the fire, a fire gift, a pleasing fragrance to God. If your peace offering to God comes from the flock, destruction, while Jews clamor for miraculous demonstrations and Greeks go in for philosophical wisdom, we go right on proclaiming Christ, the crucified. Jews treat this like an anti-miracle and Greeks pass it off as absurd. But to us who are personally called by God himself, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is God's ultimate miracle and wisdom all wrapped up in one. Human wisdom is so tinny, so impotent next to the seeming absurdity of God. Human strength can't begin to compete with God's weak means, all these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on. It means we'd better get on with it, strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it. Because he never lost sight of where he was headed, that exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there, in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through. That will shoot adrenaline into your souls. In this all-out match against us, nothing Whenever, though, they turn to face God as Moses did, God removes the veil and there they are, face to face. They suddenly recognize that God is a living, personal presence, not a piece of chiseled stone. And when God is personally present, a living spirit, that old, constricting legislation is recognized as obsolete. We're free of it, all of us, nothing between us and God, our faces shining with the brightness of His face. And so we are transfigured much like the Messiah, our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like Him. Your offering is a peace offering, and you present an animal from the herd, either male or female. It must be an animal without any defect. Lay your hand on the head of your offering and slaughter it at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Aaron's sons, the priests, will throw the blood on all sides of the altar. As a fire gift to God from the peace offering, present all the fat that covers or is connected to the entrails, the two kidneys and the fat around them at the loins, and the lobe of the liver that is removed along with the kidneys. Aaron and his sons will burn it on the altar along with the whole burnt offering that is on the wood prepared for the fire. A fire gift, a pleasing fragrance to God. God comes from the flock. If the offering is a goat, bring it into the presence of God Lay your hand on its head and slaughter it in front of the tent of meeting. Aaron's sons will throw the blood on all sides of the altar. As a fire gift to God, present the fat that covers and is connected to the entrails, the two kidneys and the fat which is around them on the loins, and the lobe of the liver which is removed along with the kidneys. The priest will burn them on the altar. A meal, a fire gift, a pleasing fragrance. All the fat belongs to God. This is the fixed rule down through the generations. Wherever you happen to live, don't eat the fat. Don't eat the blood. None of it. Because we know how trouble... Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. He presented himself for this sacrificial death when we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. And even if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. We can understand someone dying for a person worth dying for, and we can understand how someone good and noble could inspire us to selfless sacrifice. But God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were of no use whatever to him. We are raised up out of the world. Could it be any clearer? Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ, a decisive end to that sin-miserable life. No longer it sins every beck and call. What we believe is this, if we get included in Christ's sin-conquering death, 
we also get included in his life-saving resurrection. We know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was a signal of the end of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him. But alive, he brings God down to us. From now on, think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue, and you hang on every word. You are dead to sin and alive to God. That's what Jesus did. He and us. To love. To be loved. God is love. When we take up permanent residence in a life of love, we live in God and God lives in us. This way, love has the run of the house, becomes at home and mature in us, so that we're free of worry on Judgment Day. Our standing in the world is identical with Christ's. There's no room in love for fear. Well-formed love banishes fear, since fear is crippling, a fearful life. Fear of death, fear of judgment, is one not yet fully formed in love. We, though, Moses, we have nothing. Whenever, though, they turn to face God as Moses did, God removes the veil, and there they are, face to face. They suddenly recognize that God is a living, personal presence, not a piece of chiseled stone. And when God is personally present, a living spirit, that old, constricting legislation is recognized as obsolete. We're free of it, all of us. Nothing between us and God. Our faces shining with the brightness of His face. And so we are transfigured much like the Messiah, our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like Him. We're speaking of developing patience. Chapter 5 by entering through faith into what God has always wanted to do for us, set us right with Him, make us fit for Him. We have it all together with God because of our Master Jesus. And that's not all. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that He has already thrown open His door to us. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're God had opened the door. In the Messiah, in Christ, God leads us from place to place in one perpetual victory parade. Through us, He brings knowledge of Christ. Everywhere we go, people breathe in the exquisite fragrance. Because of Christ, we give off a sweet scent rising to God, which is recognized by those on the way of salvation, an aroma redolent with life. But those on the way to destruction treat us more like the stench from a rotting corpse. This is a terrific responsibility. Is anyone competent to take this? Speak to the people of Israel. Tell them, don't eat any fat of cattle or sheep or goats. The fat of an animal found dead or torn by wild animals can be put to some other purpose, but you may not eat it. If you eat fat from an animal from which a gift has been presented to God, you'll be excluded from the congregation. And don't eat blood, whether of birds or animals, no matter where you end up living. If you eat blood, you'll be excluded from the congregation. It is love. We, though, are going to love. Love and be loved. First we were loved, now we love. He loved us first. Not Jesus did the act. To get there, he had to pass through Samaria. He came into Sychar, a Samaritan village that bordered the field Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was still there. Jesus, worn out by the trip, sat down at the well. It was noon. A woman, a water pot, back. It's harvest time. In the meantime, the disciples pressed him. Rabbi, eat. Aren't you going to eat? He told them, I have food to eat you know nothing about. The disciples were puzzled. Jesus said, The food that keeps me going is that I do the will of the one who sent me, finishing the work he started. As you look around right now, wouldn't you say that in about four months it will be time to harvest? Well, I'm telling you to open your eyes and take a good look at what's right in front of you. These Samaritan fields are ripe. It's harvest time. The harvest to Moses. God spoke to Moses. Speak to the people of Israel. Tell them, when you present a peace offering to God, Bring some of your peace offering as a special sacrifice to God, a gift to God in your own hands. Bring the fat with the breast and then wave the breast before God as a wave offering. The priest will burn the fat on the altar. Aaron and his sons get the breast. 
Give the right thigh from your peace offerings as a contribution offering to the priest. Give a portion of the right thigh to the son of Aaron who offers the blood and fat of the peace offering as his portion. From the peace offerings of Israel, I'm giving the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the contribution offering to Aaron the priest and his sons. This is their fixed compensation from the people of Israel. From the day they are presented, the awful word is sharp. The high priest who cried out in pain. Now that we know what we have, Jesus, this great high priest with ready access to God, let's not let it slip through our fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. He's been through weakness and testing, experienced it all, all but the sin. So let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy, accept the help. Stone, but you are the ones chosen by God. Chosen for the high calling of priestly work. Chosen to be a holy people. God's instruments to do His work and speak out for Him. To tell others of the night and day difference He made for you. From nothing to something. From rejected to accepted. They are God's discipline in a long distance race. Chapter 12 Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way. All these veterans cheering us on. It means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it. Because he never lost sight of where he was headed, that exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there, in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through. That will shoot adrenaline into your souls. It's planned all along. By my response is to get down on my knees before the Father, this magnificent Father who parcels out all heaven and earth. I ask him to strengthen you by his Spirit. Not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength. That Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite Him in. And I ask Him that with both feet planted firmly on love, you'll be able to take in with all Christians the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Reach out and experience the breadth. Test its length. Plumb the depths. Rise to the heights. Live full lives. Fetch among you today as we... Be assured that from the first day we heard of you, we haven't stopped praying for you. Asking God to give you wise minds and spirits attuned to His will, and so acquire a thorough understanding of the ways in which God works. We pray that you'll live well for the Master, making Him proud of you as you work hard in His orchard. As you learn more and more how God works, you will learn how to do your work. We pray that you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul, not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength God gives. It is strength that endures the unendurable and spills over into joy, thanking the Father who makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that He has for us. God rescued us. Israel, tell them. God spoke to Moses. Speak to the people of Israel. Tell them. When you present a peace offering to God, bring some of your peace offering as a special sacrifice to God, a gift to God in your own hands. Bring the fat with the breast and then wave the breast before God as a wave offering. The priest will burn the fat on the altar. Aaron and his sons get the breast. Give the right thigh from your peace offerings as a contribution offering to the priest. Give a portion of the right thigh to the son of Aaron who offers the blood and fat of the peace offering as his portion. From the peace offerings of Israel, I'm giving the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the contribution offering to Aaron the priest and his sons. This is their fixed compensation from the people of Israel. From the day they are presented to serve as already turned traitors. The Bread and the Cup During the meal, Jesus took and blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Take, eat, this is my body. Taking the cup and thanking God, he gave it to them. Drink this, all of you. This is my blood. God's new covenant poured out for many people for the forgiveness of sins. I'll not be drinking wine from this cup again until that new day when I'll drink with you in the kingdom of my Father. It is a votive offering. God spoke to Moses. Speak to the people of Israel. Tell them, 
Don't eat any fat of cattle or sheep or goats. The fat of an animal found dead or torn by wild animals can be put to some other purpose, but you may not eat it. If you eat fat from an animal from which a gift has been presented to God, you'll be excluded from the congregation. And don't eat blood, whether of birds or animals, no matter where you end up living. If you eat blood, you'll be excluded from the congregation. Drink wine or strong. Moses spoke to Aaron and his surviving sons, Eleazar and Ithamar. Take the leftovers of the grain offering from the fire gifts for God and eat beside the altar that which has been prepared without yeast, for it is most holy. Eat it in the holy place because it is your portion and the portion of your sons from the fire gifts for God. This is what God commanded me. Also, you and your sons and daughters are to eat the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the contribution offering in a clean place. They are provided as your portion and the portion of your children from the peace offerings presented by the people of Israel. Bring the thigh of the contribution offering and the breast of the wave offering and the fat pieces of the fire gifts and lift them up as a wave offering. This will be the regular share for you and your children as ordered by God. From the day they are presented to serve as priests to God, Aaron and his sons can expect to receive these allotments from the gifts of God. This is what God commanded the people of Israel to give the priests from the day of their anointing. This is the fixed rule down through the generations. God is chance, supper for 5,000. When Jesus got the news, he slipped away by boat to an out-of-the-way place by himself. But unsuccessfully, someone saw him and the word got around. Soon, a lot of people from the nearby villages walked around the lake to where he was. When he saw them coming, he was overcome with pity and healed their sick.